Each week, the Stanford Graduate Program in Journalism invites an industry professional to share their insights. And each week, we bring you the highlights. I left time in 2009, and back then, you know, the main thing that besides uh, concentrating on, on uh, continuing work at time, so I still stayed on and did work as a foreign editor and foreign correspondent, uh, kind of on a, a uh, spot basis. But I also started a blog. I'd, I'd had a bunch of kids by my uh, number. I'd had two of them, and they kind of colonized my brain. So uh, we started with a couple other journalists, this blog called Dad Wagon. But most of my focus for the last, uh, I would say, year and a half has been on building a business around uh, this site called Roads and Kingdoms, which is much more a continuation of the work that I'd always done at Time. So it's, it's foreign correspondence, uh, but it's mixed with culture and music and food. Um, I would say right now in the, at Roads and Kingdoms, we're in the process of finding a business partner who uh, will make it their money to care a lot, or make it their job to care a lot about money and to uh, be incentivized to go and find money. And I think that's, you know, that's the key. Um, and if you talk to any of the folks who are doing startups um, in, in the journalism area, and, and Corey Sika, who runs the all, who's been, uh, you know, I think a, an inspiration to a lot of us who want to get into self, you know, kind of self-created <laughs> publications, is, has been very clear about this, that he, you know, he would never start a, a, a journalism project without having a really greedy dude or woman on your team, like somebody that just wants to make money. Because we as writers and journalists are really bad at that, and we should be bad at that, and we should always have somebody along uh, who's going to help us you know, keep our eye on that, on that prize. You have to read. I mean, I mean, that sounds like very facile, but certainly when I was at Time, I got so many submissions or pitches from people who clearly had never read Time magazine, or at least not as adults, you know. <laughs> uh, and that's the that's the very simplest thing. And I've been, a, you know, I have to say I've been a little guilty of this. I have a friend who was an editor at Harper's, and I loved the idea of Harper's. I just wasn't really reading it a lot, but I had a piece that kind of I thought, well, the idea of Harper's is that they would be into something like this. And he, I sent him a note about it, and he sent me a thing back, and he's like, do you even read this magazine? And I, so I was totally busted. Like, no, I have not been reading your magazine, and I should not be assigned that story because of it. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it's just a, the very basic thing that a lot of folks don't get right. And not just like reading it like, oh, I really, you know, I like The New Yorker, everything they, they write seems so smart and, and so on, but like really figure out what their beats are you know, what, what you're not allowed to write about. You were not gonna write about Israel for the New Yorker. They got that covered. You're not gonna write about baseball. So, you know, you have to figure out the very specific ways that you can work into it. Um, and then you just, like for all freelancing, you just have to get a really, really thick skin. Whenever I wanna figure out what the future of writing uh, in journalism is gonna be, I talk to a photographer because they have gone through this about 10 years ago um, where all the staff photographers lost their jobs. They had to think really hard about why they were in this. And I think that industry is doing tremendous work. And, and, uh, and so that's where writing is going, I think. I think that people are going to have to, they'll get to do a, a lot more intense projects, uh, perhaps. You will find that you're paid less well for for all of it, but um, there's an opportunity, I think, to be creative. And when I see, you know, when I see sites like The All, and to a much smaller degree, even Roads and Kingdoms, being a place where writers who get published on there get picked up for paying assignments by old magazines, um, I think that's kind of great because The All is a much more free form and I think creative place than any of those old magazines. And a lot of writers are gonna be forced to think about who they are, what stories they wanna tell, why they wanna tell them, and they're gonna go and do them. And, uh, and I think that's pretty great. Um, you know, you just, have to, you just have to hustle. <laughs>